Welcome to You Should Know, a series about the things you should have been taught in high school, but weren't. In each episode, we'll dive into a topic that's important to understand and easy to implement into your life. We'll talk to experts, break down complex ideas, and give you the information that you need to make informed decisions. So whether you're looking to learn something new or just want to stay up to date on the latest news, You Should Know is the place for you. So give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and let's get started. I'm Danae Hicks with the Ellis County, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I serve as the Family Community Health Agent, and I'm going to let our guest introduce herself today. Hi, I'm Megan Hackworth. I am one of the program coordinators for the statewide um, Passenger Safety and Kids Safe Initiatives Program. We focus mostly on child passenger safety, um, keeping kiddos safe in cars, but also other areas of occupant protection, such as buckling up for all ages and um, the importance of not dis- not driving distracted or speeding, things like that. So that's who I am. I asked Megan to come on today to talk about car seat safety in fall and winter months when clothing kind of starts to change. It might make it a little bit more difficult. So, Megan, if you can start off, tell us why it's important that we kind of prioritize passenger safety even more during the winter months than we normally would. That's a great question. So, um, well, first of all, when I think of winter months, I think of a lot of holidays and a lot of holiday traveling. So you're probably spending more time um, in the car on the road than you would be other times of the year. In addition, not only are we spending more time on the road, but our roads are more likely to have hazardous scenarios due to the weather. We're going to get more rain, hail, sleet, um, possibly even ice or snow, things like that, which is just going to make it more dangerous. Um, Every time we're on the road, we need to be buckled up properly and our children should be appropriately restrained. But um, especially so when there's extra hazards out on the road, because we can't control what all is happening out there, but what you can control is what's in your car. And that is how you and your children are all buckled up appropriately. So it's very, very important. Um, And then like you mentioned in the winter, of course, we have extra layers of clothing and that does uh, interact with the car seat as well. Yeah, so let's hop into that. We all know the infamous puffy winter jackets that are in all the cartoons in real life, the real nice puffy ones that are super warm. How do those uh, impact kids in car seats? Well, what a lot of parents don't realize when they put their child in that puffy jacket is that um, that jacket will compress when enough force is placed on it. So even if they're trying to snug the harness really tight around the jacket and they feel like they got it snug in a crash, there will still be a lot of extra slack in the harness. Um, So it's just not as safe to have your child in the car seat in a, in a big puppy jacket. Um, And a good way you can check to see if it, um, if it's actually adding extra slack or not would be to place your child in the seat, buckle them up, get it as snug as you feel like you can with the jacket, then take them out, take the jacket off and put them back in without making any adjustments to the harness. If the harness is loose enough that you're able to pinch any of the webbing at the child's shoulders or anywhere else for that matter, then it's too loose. Um, And that means that the jacket is adding in extra, um, extra room that will compress in the event of a crash, even if it even if it seems tight to you. Yeah, that's that's a good tip. I was gonna ask you if there's a way to test it. So I'm glad you hopped in on that. The next question for most parents then is, well, what do I do? Because I don't want my child to freeze. <laughs> if it gets really cold here, what do I do then? I can't just leave them without a jacket. What we re- usually recommend is do lighter layers um, maybe do some layers like a fleece, a warm fleece layer is not going to add a lot of bulk, but it will add warmth. Um, So if you're concerned about that, make sure they're dressed appropriately under their jacket, first of all, but then go ahead and take the puffy jacket off, buckle them in their car seat as normal, um, make sure it's snug. And then you can place that jacket around them like a blanket over the harness, or a lot of parents will just have a blanket that they keep in the car just for putting around their child 
um, in the car seat because they know they can't use the big puffy jacket. So you can place a blanket or a jacket around your child once you know they're appropriately buckled in. You just don't want to put anything between them and the car seat. Yeah, perfect. So let's say you have a parent that is just absolutely convinced that they can get that harness tight enough. Mm -hmm. That child is so safe. It's tight enough. If they get in a wreck, it's not going to compress at all. What, what advice would you give to them or what guidance would you give to them? I would, I would have them test themselves by doing this. The thing I suggested earlier, put your, put your child in with the jacket take them out, put it in without the jacket, maybe do this when it's not super cold outside, <laughs> um, if you're really concerned about this, or bring the car seat into the house to test this, um, and see, see if there's any extra slack. I bet most people would be surprised. Now, if you do that test and there's still no extra slack, congratulations. <laughs> I guess you managed to get it tight enough. Um, so I don't know, maybe, and, and some jackets are gonna be uh, naturally, puffier or compressed more or less than others. So there's not one hard and fast rule, but you can test it by using the car seat with and without the jacket and just check to see, am I getting a nice safe harness fit without the jacket and with the jacket? If you can, I'm not going to say don't do it because that's your discretion as a parent to decide. Okay. So we talked about kids that are, that are in car seats, like toddlers that aren't in the carriers. What about little bitties that are in the carriers? They've got like the cute little car seat covers, things like that. Does that affect it at all? So um, I believe you're talking about the the cover me kind of things where it goes around the whole car seat. Um, that is really an interesting topic. And there is a lot of mixed feelings on that, even within the child passenger safety technician community. <laughs> Some people say, hey, okay, I don't have any problem with it. Um, other people will say, absolutely not, no way, no how. That is an example of what we would consider a non-approved product in the child passenger safety world. A non-approved product is anything that you add to the car seat over and above that didn't come with it. Um, if the manufacturer doesn't give this to you and say, hey, use this with the car seat, then that's where we're there's a big gray area as far as, is this actually safe or not? Um, so I cannot give you one hard and fast answer as far as whether or not you can use those. But what I would suggest is if you think you want to use one, call your car seat manufacturer. There will be a um, 1-800 number on the side of the seat where, it lab where the labels uh, show you the company's information. They'll have a address and a number and everything. So you can call that number and ask to speak to a child passenger safety technician that works for their customer service and then ask them that question. And that would really be a place where as a car seat technician, I would defer to each manufacturer as far as whether that can be used with their products. Yeah, because as we all know, not all car seats are the same, right? They don't have the same rules. They don't have, it doesn't seem like anything's ever consistent. And you say this like we all know, but it's really not that common of knowledge. In fact, a lot of this was new to me when I got certified as a car seat technician. I um, had already had children for, let's see, eight years before I got certified as a technician. And I'm, I'm a very rule abiding person. I like to do things the right way. <laughs> and when I got certified, I learned a lot that I'd I had been doing wrong or hadn't realized. So some of these things that once we're already a technician and we're in this world seem common sense to us, aren't really common sense to everybody else in quite the same way. Yeah. Or it's hard to remember back to before I learned all this stuff. <laughs> sure. For sure. Okay. So we're going to wrap up on kind of a hypothetical question. Um, sure. It's one that's really important for parents that have the kids that are just getting really close to maxing out a weight limit either for their harness or for rear facing to turn forward facing or anything like that. Let's say the kid's 38 pounds and the car seat has a 40 pound max for rear facing. Whenever we're talking weight, are we talking like winter boots, winter coat, extra layers, all of that included in the weight or is it just the kiddo's weight? Talking about their weight fully clothed. So yes, if they're wearing a whole lot of extra gear, 
then you would add that into the weight that the seat is um, able to handle. However, I would also caution you to not be thinking only about weight because on average, most children are gonna reach the height limit well before the weight limit. Only the rare child reaches the weight before they hit the height. Um, so I know it's kind of funny because we always think about the weight limits of our car seats. We think, oh, well, my infant car seat goes up to 35 pounds, but who's using that car seat up to 35 pounds? Nobody is. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody is. They're all moving out way sooner than that because the children reach the height first. Um, so really, I would also caution you to keep an eye on the height, which a lot of people don't know to do. Um, there, for a rear-facing kiddo, we always want to have at least an inch of the car seat shell visible above the child's head, and that's a good cue, but also just keep an eye on their height as you're taking them for doctor's visits or just checking on your own occasionally um, to be thinking about both of those. But yes, we want to look at both the height and the weight, and the weight limit is fully clothed. So um, that is something that is another kind of switch from how we often think, because when we go to the doctor, we're even like taking off our shoes. <laughs> we're supposed to be like, okay, minimum amount of weight here, but it's the opposite when we're talking car seats. Perfect. Do you have any like key takeaways that you want parents or people that are listening or viewing this to really make sure that you get to drive home? Yeah. So. Uh, definitely, definitely always make sure that every passenger in your vehicle is buckled in. In Texas, that is the law that every passenger has to buckle up. And you want to make sure that each person is buckled appropriately. Um, we're getting more road time in our cars on the holidays. It's almost Thanksgiving. I don't know when this will be actually published, but many people are traveling for Thanksgiving or Christmas holidays. And so, yes, you're spending more time on the road. So you want to make sure that you're doing everything just right. Also, when you're traveling for holidays, if you have a lot of extra things in your car, baggage and stuff like that, the safest place for those items is going to be in the trunk because anything that's not secured could become a projectile in the vehicle. And that goes for giving your child toys and tablets to play with on those long road trips as well. So just make sure that you're taking the precautions necessary because there's some crazy people out there on the roadways. And even when we're doing everything right, we can't control what happens, um, what happens to us in the car, but what we can control is how we buckle up our kiddos. Uh, if you're unsure about anything about how your car seat is installed or the harnessing or the appropriateness of that seat for your child, find a child passenger safety technician to check it um, because it never hurts to have a second set of eyes and someone else um, looking over things to make sure that you're doing everything as safe as possible to give your kiddos all the protection. Where would one go to find a child passenger safety technician? Okay, good question. Uh, well, of course, in Texas, we have a website that lists all of the currently certified technicians. It's called buckleup.tamu.edu. So you can search for a technician in your area. You can put in your city, zip code, county, whatever you want, and find someone near you that way. Um, you can always contact your local AgriLife agent, and they would be able to get you in contact with us. Um, or nationwide, I don't, if this is going outside of Texas, you can also search at um, cert, C-E-R-T dot safekids.org, and that will take you to a um, database nationwide of car seat technicians who are able to help you. Um, I would caution many parents have the idea that you can just show up to any fire station or police station to get your car seat checked. And that is, it would be great if it worked that way, but unfortunately not all firefighters, not all police officers have the expertise in car seats to be able to give you good, accurate information. So you want to make sure that the person who's checking your seat is actually a certified technician, not just someone who's well-meaning and wants to help. Yes. Cause like you said earlier, we may have parents or we may be parents, we may have had kids, but that doesn't mean that we know every single in and out, up and down, where to find info on a car seat to make sure everything's good. Yes. 
as I learned personally from personal experience. <laughs> Been there too. So thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. I think our viewers are going to get quite good information out of this and hopefully they'll have lots to take home and think about and we'll have a magic uptick in car seat inspections to keep all those kiddos safe. That would be lovely. All right. Thanks, Megan. All right. Thank you. Bye. This has been You Should Know. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and a comment about what you learned today. We're so glad you stopped by. And as always, if you'd like to reach out to us, email us at youshouldknowwithdanae at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.